Welcome back to Reinvent Healthcare, the podcast for wellness-minded people and professionals who are passionate about transforming our broken, disease-focused system that they call a healthcare system, but it's not. And my mission is to empower millions of people to go from disease and dysfunction into living the healthiest life possible. And I do that by training health and wellness practitioners. So I am so happy that you're here. My name is Dr. Rita Marie Loscalzo, and I just passionately believe that all disease can be prevented or reversed, or most of it, right? And if you've dabbled in genetic testing and you're looking to use the results of genetic testing in your clinical practice to help people get back their hormone levels and their energy, and their libido, you're in the right place. So before we get started, I want to remind you that we have a great resource guide on adrenal health. And when you go to reinventhealthcare.com forward slash adrenals, you can download that for free. Lots of charts, lots of information that are going to help you to support your patients and your clients and even yourself back to health. So let's get started talking about the genetic factors involved in adrenal function and the HPA axis, the hypothalamic pituitary adrenal axis. We need to have good functioning HPA axis so that we can have good functioning adrenals so that we can function at our best, sharpest, clearest, energetic, and full of drive and full of energy. So how does genetics fit into the whole picture of you helping people to restore their health, to restore their adrenal health? We have to look at the clinical picture. We have to look at what's involved. So genes are part of the picture, and we're going to talk about them today in detail. But also involved is what's going on with them in their history. What kind of diseases do they have in their family history? What kind of diseases have they had so that we know how to use that, run the right labs, and then be able to put together a personalized health program that addresses what's currently going on right now. Not just a list of herbs that they should take to cover up the symptoms, not medications that are going to cover up symptoms, but truly helping them to get well by restoring balance on the inside. So let's just briefly review what are gene SNPs single nucleotide polymorphisms. Those are what a lot of the lay population calls genetic defects, genetic mutations. And I don't believe anybody's mutated. We just have variability. The same way you have blue eyes, I have brown eyes. One of us isn't defective, we're just different. And that's the same thing with our genes. In a lot of ways, we have differences in the gene pathways. In some cases, the differences are going to make it harder for us to have proper function. And in some cases, some of those variants are going to make it easier. And those genes, those variations come up through evolution, through time, and through things like famines and wars and, and exposures that they develop so that the subsequent generations of people can survive those things. So some of these gene mutations, they're called SNPs, single nucleotide polymorphisms, are actually protective, or they were protective at the time, but they may not be so protective right now. So just so that you know what single nucleotide polymorphisms are, they are changes in a nucleotide, which is part of the DNA. The DNA has the sugars and the bases in these nucleotides. And when one is swapped for another, we get a difference in how they code for proteins and how the function of that biochemical pathway or that physical structure is working. So let's talk about a handful of these that have been found to be involved in adrenal health. So let's start with one that's called ADRB2. So that's a gene ADRB2, and it has a change, uh, a SNP there that can cause dysfunction in the adrenals. So it encodes the beta-2 adrenergic receptor. What does that mean? Well, that's a receptor that affects the signaling and the attachment of adrenal hormones. And this particular one affects epinephrine. And if you recall, we have the adrenal has the cortex and the medulla. And the cortex is where cortisol is produced and the epinephrine is produced in the medulla. When we have an issue, when we have a SNP here, it can lead to chronic fatigue. People are just chronically fatigued. Obesity. And we know that some of the uh, signs of adrenal dysfunction is people gain weight, anxiety, depression, right? So, and also chronic pain. So this is an important one to look at 
to see if your person has a tendency towards th these issues. Here's what I want to say before we go too much further. When someone has some of these SNPs in the adrenal function genes, it doesn't mean they're going to have a problem. What it means is they need to be more careful about the factors that affect that area. So they need to just watch and go, oh, I'm t I have a tendency to have this problem with the receptors and therefore I need to focus on how can I support the synthesis of these hormones? How can I not overdo my need for these hormones and have the stress management techniques in place? For all of the stuff related to the d adrenals, whether you're looking at the herbs and the nutrients, the key thing you have to look at in helping and supporting people is with their stress response. Because if somebody's got a stressful life and they don't know how to manage it, they're going to have problems with their adrenals. There's another one called ADRA1, which binds to epinephrine, adrenaline, and norepinephrine and it increases the susceptibility to fatigue. Epinephrine and norepinephrine are like that, that first response of the adrenal to stress. So it's like learning how to calm that down and not get into stressful situations. You've got a tiger chasing you and you get the signal that, whoops, you're in danger. That signal is going to go from the, the hypothalamus down through and into the adrenals and say, make me some epinephrine, adrenaline right away. And then once the, the threat is passed, cortisol comes in and kind of mops up the situation. And then we go back to let's go pick berries, right? That's not how life is in the modern world, but that's how life was when all these mechanisms developed. So when we have a problem with this ADRA1A, then we're going to need to be conscious of this because we're going to be more susceptible to fatigue or a client's going to be. There's another one called CRH. R1, and it codes a receptor that activates the HPA axis and produces sex hormones. We know that when there's a stressor, we have the production of ACTH, which stimulates the adrenals to produce the adrenaline and the cortisol. Okay. When we have a problem with this CRHR1, when we have a SNP, and I, and I say problem, I don't really mean problem because we don't even know when we see that there's these markers in the genes that that person has even activated that. And that's another story for another day. So this can lead to fatigue, depression, PTSD, and IBS. These are all things that we see along with adrenal dysfunction. And I do want to say we have a whole theme in this podcast on the SNPs on the nutrigenomics. So if this is an area that you're not completely familiar with, or you just want to go deeper with, I would recommend that you go back and listen to those podcast episodes. Here's another one, NR3C1. And by the way, I don't memorize these. I know what they mean, but you know, you look them up and I have these amazing SNP charts that people who come to our events are going to get access to. So NR3C1 codes for the glucocorticoid receptor. And when this SNP is present and activated, it can lead to increased inflammatory response, increased self-proliferation, which can lead to you know, autoimmune and, and cancer type things. And it can also lead to fatigue, hypoglycemia, because it's responsible for the glucocorticoid receptor. We can have hypoglycemia. We can have hyperglycemia. We can have up and down blood sugar. So dysregulation of the blood sugar system, hypertension, high blood pressure, depression, anxiety, all of these symptoms can happen when we have a problem with this NR3C1. Another one is catecholamine O-methyltransferase, COMT, and it breaks down catecholamines and catecholamines are those epinephrines, norepinephrines, and there's others in there. When we have SNPs in this area, you can have chronic fatigue, but you can also have anxiety. And so we wanna be careful about supporting people with this calm T, I call it. So another couple that you've heard a lot about, MTHFR, very popular. There's another one that's related is MTRR. So it's responsible for converting the non-methyl version of folate, vitamin B9, into the methylated active version that helps with methylation and DNA repair and so much more. And it converts it into that form, which is 5-methyl-tetrahydrofolic acid or tetrahydrofolate. We, we haven't been using the folic acid. It was always what it was called in the past, the folate. 
but it's really folate, not folic acid, because of late in the last, you know, whatever decades, we've had co supplement companies making a synthetic form of it, which is folic acid. So that's something you want to be really careful of and avoid. So MTHFR is essential for everything. It's essential for methylation, for breaking down and metabolizing some of the steroid hormones, in particular, estrogen, testosterone, progesterone. And it plays a really important role in SAMe production. And SAMe then is responsible for a lot of the actual methylation and DNA repair that we need. And when we don't have enough, when we have a SNP in this MTHFR, there's so many things that can go wrong. But one of them related to the adrenals is fatigue. It's also associated with miscarriages and with homocysteine being elevated. And that would predisposed to brain and and heart cardiac problems, how it's related to the adrenals and how the MTRR is related to adrenals is because of the B vitamin connection. B vitamins, B9 and B12 are very important for adrenal function. MTRR converts the inactive B12 into activated methyl cobalamin. The way that MTRR and MTHFR are connected to the adrenals also is the detoxification pathways that they service and that they support. And it's really important that we reduce oxidative stress instead of increase oxidative stress. So if these pathways are not working 100%, we're gonna have more um, problems with detoxification, which can lead to adrenal dysfunction. Another way that these are important is the relationship to the methylation that's controlled by the MTHFR and MTRR to produce SAMe, S adenosyl methionine, which plays a vital role in the synthesis and function of norepinephrine, adrenaline, dopamine, serotonin, and histamine. So it's a very important piece of the puzzle. And when we don't have the right forms, the methylated forms of B12 and folate, which can happen from these MTRR or MTHFR SNPs, then we're not gonna get enough SAMe and a lot of that process is gonna fall apart. Folate and B12 are absolutely required. So there are some other markers, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on these, but I want to make sure that you're aware that anything that's related to increased inflammation can affect the adrenals. So there are some markers that stimulate the HPA axis and the sympathetic nervous system through the process of inflammation. And some of these are TNF-alpha, IL-1B, and that's the name of the SNP, but IL-1 is um, interleukin. 1B, interleukin 4, and interleukin 6. So the SNP names, if you're looking these up and want to go deeper, are TNF-alpha, IL-1B, IL-4, and IL-6. Really important inflammation markers. And if people are predisposed to inflammation and they have these, they're going to have an increase in their HPA axis, which is going to put a strain on the adrenals over time. The next one I want to talk about is NR3C1 which encodes the glucocorticoid receptor. It's been associated with altered sensitivity to glucocorticoids and can contribute to the development of cortisol-related disorders like Cushing's or Addison's, which are autoimmune processes. There's another one called the HTR2A gene, which codes for the serotonin 2A receptor. And studies have suggested that a variant in this particular gene can influence the regulation of cortisol secretion and play a role in de developing depression and anxiety, which of course we know that serotonin is related to. We have the CYP3A4, which is one of the phase one detoxification genes. And it's an enzyme that's involved in metabolizing cortisol and other hormones. And variants have been associated with altered levels of cortisol and, again, may contribute to Cushing's disorder, an autoimmune condition. We have MC2R, and this encodes this melanocortin receptor. Variants in this particular gene have been associated with decreased sensitivity to ACTH, adrenocortical trophic hormone, which is produced by the brain to tell the adrenals to get ready for stress and produce. And so that can be impaired cortisol production and symptoms of adrenal deficiency. Finally, we're going to talk about another one, HSD11B1, which is related to cortisol and cortisone. And it's involved in the conversion from cortisol to an inactive form called cortisone. 
And certain variants have been associated with altered cortisol metabolism. So if, if the cortisol is being over or under converted to add cortisone, we can either have too much cortisol or we can have too little cortisol. And that's going to affect the adrenals very much. So this can lead to the development of obesity and metabolic syndrome and other things. So that's it for the adrenal SNPs. I highly recommend if this is an area that you want to go deeper with, we'll put a list of these SNPs that we talked about today on the show notes page so that you can look them up and reference them if you want to go deeper. If you want to go even deeper, you can visit ionemethod.com because we go through a lot of the genetic markers for all the different variants and all the different systems in our nutritional endocrinology program. One of the modules is completely devoted to nutrigenomics and genetics. If you want more resources related to adrenal health and adrenal function, then visit our reinventhealthcare.com forward slash adrenals page, and you can get our resource guide loaded with lots of information related to the adrenals. And until next time, shine on.